Hi guys, it is Leslie. I'm gonna adjust this real quick. From oops, Leslie Jordan Wellness and the Eat Free Live Fierce podcast. I am coming with to you today just with a little bit, a little solo cast here, chatting about spring. We're at the first week of spring here in the Northern Hemisphere is almost wrapped up. And spring brings that energy and that feeling that helps us renew our focus. So that's been our topics on Facebook and on Instagram this week. I am providing a free mini series. Of course, it's free. It's Instagram. And it's not um, protected uh, content. I just wanted to provide some tips on, you know, you have that spring fever, right? That energy to spring clean, things like that. So that energy comes from, you know, we're animals. So we're in tune as much as we are detached from the seasons and nature. We are also still very much in tune with nature cycles. And even though winter can be, you know, beautiful and nice and cozy, it's also um, a time of year that can be kind of uninspiring. It's not sunny sometimes. It looks bleak. There aren't any green leaves or sometimes there's not flowers blooming. So, and especially if you are in some of the harsher climates, it can really take your toll, take a toll on you physically and mentally. So as we emerge, right, from that wintering or that hiber mini hibernation that humans go into during those cold months, um, we get to emerge and refocus on our goals. And so that's what I kind of wanted to do this first week of spring, take some time to encourage you to refocus on your goals. And if you don't have any, or you can't even remember what they were in January, now is the time that you can take some time to get to know yourself, dig a little bit deeper, ask yourself some questions and figure out where you are and where you want to be. So that is what springtime to me is perfect for. It is that busy, inspiring, action-oriented energy. So I just want to share some ideas with you today, some ideas about how to or where to maybe focus across the dimensions of well-being. I'm not talking about, you know, oh, that, that new spring cleanse or some detox. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about having a lovely, balanced, joyful life. And that happens when all or most of those dimensions, those parts, those pieces of our life are improving and balanced across that, that those dimensions. So for me, as a holistic coach, I personally believe in coaching to 10 dimensions. So I want to be all up in your business. Um, so those 10 dimensions that I coach to are physical well-being, mental and emotional well-being, financial well-being. I also coach to spiritual well-being, intellectual well-being, social, of course, your relationships, all of them, that well-being, occupational or career well-being, environmental in your personal environment and the environment at large. And also, I believe that creativity should be its own dimension. It helps us in so many ways. And so I also talk about that in my coaching practice. And what I like to do is I like, I love the will of life type of tool where we kind of give an overall evaluation of all of those areas. And then you pick, sometimes it is extremely difficult or doggone near impossible to try to work on all of them in depth at a time but we look at the most critical areas of the areas that need the most attention first that impact you the most and we get those up and then we start to go back and maybe grab another one and say okay we're here let's go grab this and we're here and that's how I help my clients so and that just depends on you and where you are um I will talk a little bit briefly at the end about a specific program that I like to go through um, quarterly. So it could spring clean, but it could also be, you know, summer breeze, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fall into fall type thing. It can be whenever, but it's designed to take you through about three months with actionable steps. So I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. But for right now, I just wanted to give some ideas. If you are at a loss or think everything's great, or if you feel 
Everything is not great. It's so not great. I don't exactly know where to begin because the energy can be overwhelming for some of us. So there's so much to do, so many things you want to do. And so how to focus can sometimes be uh, a struggle or a challenge, I'll say. Uh, so in the fitness or in physical, physical fitness and physical, to me, fitness is a subjective term. It doesn't mean anything except for what it means to you. Um, I think that moving your body in nature is a good thing to do. I am a believer in joyful movement. And I think that all movement is valuable. So a nice long walk and you cover a half a mile in an hour, that's beneficial to you. you there's value in that. There's also value in, you know, I don't know, one of those spin classes <laughs> where they sweat and yell a lot. That may be what your body's asking you for, and you, you may enjoy it, and that's and that's perfectly fine. There's value in it. So I do believe that hard or physically challenging workouts are valuable, and I feel that easy stretching and sleep are also just as valuable. So when you sit down and look at some of those physical goals, I think that for me, one of the biggest things, if it's available to you or you're able to do it. Is to actually get a physical, go to uh, a doctor or practitioner who can give you a once over, get some lab work done, and really look at your wellness, your well being from that perspective. This, and there are lots of weight neutral doctors, I won't say lots, but there are weight neutral doctors. There are also ways that you can just decline having your weight um, taken if that is triggering for you or you just prefer to omit that because so much of our health is tied to other things than our weight. So most of our health, I would say all of our health is literally tied to other factors that will show up in labs and show up in ways other than weight. So you can definitely get a full comprehensive physical that does not require you to be weighed. So that would probably be one thing and that would be a goal to actually get a physical and know from a medical perspective, kind of some baseline numbers. And those numbers I would be interested in would be high blood, your blood pressure, your maybe your resting heart rate, um, A1C or your fasting blood glucose, try, uh, your chlor chlor ah, cholesterol levels. Um, those would be good. And any hormone um, imbalances and vitamins and, and nutri um, nutrient defic deficiencies. If you're anemic, you would want to know that. Yes. If, um, because you could, maybe work on that yourself with things that you put on your plate and you wouldn't need medication. So you want to know those types of things. If you have a magnesium or sodium, something imbalanced there, you want to know about those. So that's, that's why I say that. And once that's clear, you don't have any strain on your heart or on your body or anything that would limit you, then I would look at maybe setting some goals to get stronger, to be able to lift kids or hold kids or you know, maybe you have a vacation plan and you would like to be able to hike that six mile hike that's there um, on that trail. So maybe working towards goals like that, that are not based in just losing weight or losing weight at all. So those are some advantages. And the springtime is a nice time to be able to do that because typically the weather is nice, not too hot, not too cold, sunshine. We've just gained an hour of daylight. So those are something that you can really look forward to. Um, so moving on to mental and emotional wellness, I spring clean. So in that vein, right, of spring cleaning, I would be looking at situations that play over and over again in your mind. Are there, un, is there an unresolved um, relationship or, or do you need to set boundaries and then be able to enforce them with people in your life? Those are type of things, and that could even cover over in social wellness, but mentally, um, are you replaying scenes that create guilt, shame feelings, or angry feelings in your mind? Are those those type of things that are just in your mind, cluttering up your mind? It's another time to also really look at cleaning up your social feeds, your news feeds, all the things that are emailed to you. Those are things that create mental clutter and being able to clear them out in this time of year makes space for happy, positive thoughts and the new experiences that are headed your way. So that is the type of mental wellness or some things that you can be looking at for yourself during this time. 
number three, financial wellness. Let's talk about it. Of course, this is spring. So here in the United States, we're getting ready to file taxes if you haven't filed them already. So this is also a really good time to be looking at your financial wellness. Yes. Are you close to your savings goal? Are you on track for your savings goal? Are you on track to repay debt that you maybe want to pay? Or, you know, those are those types of things that right now you can be looking at. I know for my family, we're looking at summer and fall trips. Do we have, you know, all those types of things. So those are financial goals that you could be looking at right now. And if the answer is no to all of them, be considering that sometimes, you know, unfortunately, relationship, well, I won't say unfortunately, forgive me for that. Sometimes relationships are better dissolved because people are happier and healthier when the relationship is dissolved. So maybe there is a divorce that has caused some financial woes or troubles or challenges with bankruptcy therapy. Like those are the things you should be looking at and evaluating truly. You can get help from that. I help some with just kind of identifying those things. I am not a financial wellness coach, but I know some really good ones. So if that is something that you really, that that's on your mind, that is looming, that is ever present in your life, financial wellness would be one of those areas that I suggest you work on um, first. I'm so sorry, I'm itching. It's springtime, so that means allergies here in, in Texas. Um, fourth dim the dimension there, spiritual wellness. Now, I know when you hear that word spiritual, people tend to think of some particular faith or religious path. But for me, I think of offering things like practicing gratitude as a spiritual practice, practicing kindness and compassion as a spiritual practice. Also, the practice of solitude, being able to sit with yourself and clear out all those other voices and really hear your true self and, and become comfortable with who you really are and living authentically. Um, reflective practices like journaling, which is my go-to, meditation I also do. Mindful eating can be a reflective practice. Meditative walks, that's another thing I love to do. Um, yoga is a practice and there's all types of yoga. There's yoga, it's a Sanskrit word, so there's that Indian style yoga. There's also, I cannot pronounce it, but comedic or an African style yoga. There's kapoeta, there's all kinds of practices. There's also crystal gazing and tarot cards and, and, you know, setting up an altar and learning about a traditional uh, belief path, all those are valid. So you have to decide what feels right for you and look at it from a place of curiosity so you can learn about it and find something that fits with your belief and value structure and that you're able to do that actually improves the way you feel about and your outward facing eyes to the world. So that's to me what that's spiritual component is about. Intellectual wellness, that is, I was a former teacher, so learning, learning, learning. So what are some things that you would like to learn? Are there things that you need to learn um, to further your career maybe, or learn how to um, invest uh, your money? So, you know, learning intellectually and also are you able to hear and listen and engage with people who have opposing viewpoints? Yeah, so <laughs> those are things that really affect our intellectual di dimension of wellness. And so those are some things that you can be thinking about for yourself. Um, socially, our relationships, that's not just our uh, romantic and life partner relationships, but the relationships we have with kids, with our parents, with our siblings, with our coworkers, with our, you know, skin folk and kin folk and girlfriends, all those things. So who are... Who are you, who's in your circle? Who's in your influence? Who do you socialize with? Do you have friends that only call you and they are a negative Nelly? Like these are those times. Do you have toxic relationships that you can maybe eliminate or at least create some boundaries to protect yourself and keep yourself from being harmed? That's what a boundary does. It keeps you from being harmed. Um, evaluating whether or not you have boundaries or barriers. Barriers you are up when you don't want to be vulnerable and no one can get across them. So that's a little bit different than a boundary. Boundaries are responsive. I heard um, Sonia Renee Taylor, if you don't know who she is, talking about that. And I was, she's phenomenal. So those things, um, how we interact with one another. Do you get enough time? If you're a caregiver, are you, do you have a, support system for yourself? Do you have a respite care 
situation set up for the time that you need to take care of yourself. Because in this dimension of social wellness and relationships, remember you are at first and foremost in a relationship with yourself. So you have to take care of yourself first. So make sure that you get all the self-care that you need in order to be successful and care for the people that you do care for. You cannot, it's impossible to pour from an empty cup. So you have to be able to incorporate that in your life and make sure that you are having some balance in that domain. Occupational wellness, man, as we are still in a pandemic, this has become a source of stress and anxiety for a lot of us. So look at your career. Is there something you need to learn to further your career? Do you need to leave your job? Do you need to let go of your business? Do you need to create your own business? These are all those things that we're talking about in that occupational wellness. Are you doing your best or are you being undervalued in your job? So these are things that you can consider for goals and some balance, creating some balance in um, that occupational sphere. We hear a lot about work-life balance. That looks different for everybody and only you can decide what works for you. So you, this is why that solitude practice is so good because you can know what works for you and you are listening to yourself. The outside voices, just don't matter. You have to do what's right for you. And you, only you can know that. And only you can intuit that from your own inner wisdom. Cultural wellness. This is something I think a lot of people lack in. Um, cultural wellness. Are you able to learn from people from a different culture? Are you able to learn with people from a different culture? Do you know anything really about other cultures? Not what you see on the social media, not what you hear in the news. Do you get to know people? Do you intermingle with people from um, other cultures? Is there someone or a culture that you would like to go and spend time among or just learn about or explore certain regions or locations of our globe? So those are those things about cultural wellness. Those are some things that you can be thinking about and really trying to understand why people maybe of a certain culture act or behave a certain way. And this is a time for you not to talk, but for you to actually listen and contemplate where this fits in and filters in through your belief system and the things that you have learned. So be careful there with beliefs and values. Yes, you have to be able to sift through things that were learned and just so ingrained in you, but are maybe not how they are everywhere else. And that's okay. So I'm so sorry, excuse me, my eyes are itchy. <clears throat> Environmental wellness. Um, as I coach a lot of eating disorders, I see a lot of fees and about being vegan or vegetarian and how it will affect our environment. So this is one of those things that you can explore for yourself. Environmental wellness, for me, it's a little bit more closer to home keeping my yard clean, recycling. And for me, even bigger than recycling is reusing and reducing the waste to begin with and um, re reducing and reusing, I said that, reducing and reusing are some of the things I think are a lot more um, doable and in the bigger scheme have a lot more impact. So think about that environment, you know, you can organize a park cleanup or a beach cleanup if you live near there. Those are those types of things that we're talking about on the larger scale. And of course, managing things for your own home and family, environmentally making sure that, you know, your apartment, your home doesn't have lead paint. That's an environmental thing. Are there, are there things, plugs or wiring that need to be repaired? Like, you know, safe environment. So that's important. So make sure you take care of that. And lastly, creativity. Creativity is one of those domains that allows us to really tap into parts of ourselves that maybe we don't want to share with everyone else, or maybe it's a way that we share those vulnerable parts of ourselves with other people through creative endeavors such as art or poetry or writing stories. It's also a way for us to de-stress. It's also a way for us to really expand um, our skill set and our experience and interaction with the world. So I think it's a highly important domain. And it, it, when you have a creative outlet, you are able to perform better across all the other domains and your life is so much uh, richer with that. And that could be just free dancing to music in your home, like I like to do with the lights off. <laughs> so there are lots of things that you can do to help 
improve your creativity, you can actually improve your creativity. You can take on a passion project, something that you just wanted to try. In recent years, we saw how popular painting with the twist became dates to go throw pottery. Um, those type of things are just so much more common and accessible. A lot of times community centers offer them for free or extremely low cost or libraries. So there are ways to break into a new creative outlet for yourself that will help balance you, mind, body, and spirit. So those are some things that you can be thinking about for this spring and how to create some more balance and get that energy into these areas of your life where you have goals so that you can renew your focus there and draw a little bit closer to your goals. I, you know, spring is in bloom and your progress should be as well. Coming up after spring, as you know, is summer. So summer to me is that, that season of fun, right? There's just something about the attitude, what's in the air about summer and the heat being loose, a little bit more carefree. Um, so it's really not actually the time I feel that people really work on their goals all that much. Um, if you are a parent like me, you are just trying to survive the summer with your kid, <laughs> not being bored and still learning and not falling behind during the summer. So you're you're very much into that, but you you still want to have fun. It's just the air in summer, which is great. It is the bounty for summer. We have lots to eat and you know look at and colors everywhere, and that's great. And then in fall, that energy will shift as we settle back down into the school year routine, which is very prevalent here in the Western uh, world. If you have, if your kids are in public school, you kind of have that routine of fall. And fall is also about harvest. That is where, you know, we get those last juicy crops. And even if you're not a gardener like me or in an agrarian society, you still feel that the, the store is different, the air is different as we slide into months of celebration if you think about our calendar year that's when all of the celebrations are happening is in that part of the year because historically that's you know season of harvest and so we enjoy that and stick back some for the wintering months yes yeah? so you spring to me is that go get it time so i hope that this gave you some things to think about ways to capitalize or maybe focus your energy in this super busy, boisterous, blooming springtime. And if you have any questions, as always, reach out to me. Like I said, I have a program that I do in at the beginning of every season. Just It's only offered for a few weeks at a time. So that this program will be offered through April 15th, right before tax day. This year, tax day in, in the U.S. is April 18th. But right up until that time, so you get to work with me and we literally go through the process of figuring out where you are, where you need to balance, clearing out stagnant energy. We take stock and then we put together a plan where you can take action and we talk weekly. So that could be through Zoom if you are in the ATX or near enough by. We can meet in person every week and we do that for 12 weeks. And so at the end of that, you have a goal or maybe a couple of goals that you set at the beginning that we will bring you through completion by the end of that and at the end we then just do like a quick once over and look ahead for what you want to create or accomplish during the summer months and we put together just a little plan to keep you on track for that you can choose to work with me again for that next quarter or you can take it from there but that is what that program is um typically i charge 197 dollars for that 12 week one-on-one -on -one coaching program which is super affordable, but this year, because we are still in a pandemic, I am offering that for $107 this year. So it is on a deep discount. And so it's something that maybe you could take advantage of. So just think about that. And again, you can reach out to me. I am at ljordanenterprises.com. I am at Instagram as eatfree.livefree. Fierce, sorry, live fierce, eat free, period, live fierce. I have the podcast, Eat Free, Live Fierce, and all of those um, addresses and links will be in the show notes. And of course, you can find me on Facebook, Lester Jordan Wellness. So I am around. I am around a lot of places. 
I am wishing you the best possible energy that this spring has kicked off with. And I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful day. Reach out to me and I will talk to you soon. Signing off for now. Have a great day.